Fantastic. So good afternoon, evening or morning, if like Rachel, it's at the start of the day. And Rachel has already been valiantly wrestling with the latest and best of technology <laughs> in order to bring this session to the den. Now, you may have seen my rather inept start or stop start. Um, and so we've reverted to a Zoom recording for this little workshop but it definitely has some advantages rachel is bringing a little palmistry our way <laughs> and because we're doing it on zoom she's able to bring up a little demonstration of um, some palm reading for us live but before we get on to that hello rachel hello. thank you for joining us and bringing your expertise and magic to the den um, would you like to tell us a little bit about where you're from and what your work currently involves? Sure, yeah. Um, hello, I'm Rachel Arazo. I'm an intuitive divination mentor. Um, my main goal is to help readers of all shapes and sizes and experiences to tap in their intuition and have fun with their practices and make learning any kind of divination like palmistry and taro easy and fun because if it's not fun then why are we doing it um <laughs> and i'm really big um on doing this mainly because i have a degree in theater so when i first got started um and especially as an empath and being on stage which is already a purely energetic environment you're tapping into a character and you're going through their emotions i discovered that using Taro, it was just like watching a movie or watching a play. It was just on cards. And when it comes to palmistry, I wanted something to carry around with myself when I don't have my cards. Yeah. And it was like, instead of looking at the stage from a 2D perspective with cards, it was more like the hand was my stage and I could see the different blocking and the different ways that I can move across it and change my life and change other people's lives. So that's really why I wanted to talk to you because I know that um, a couple of the articles went up in the group on whoever decided that um, it would be fun to make it all mystical and everything that if you have this hand this mark on your hand you're oh yes you're going to make a million dollars in five days or you're going to meet the love of your life or you're going to die and all that kind of stuff Whoever came out with those is horrible. <laughs> None of them are true. I love that it offended you so much that I made your acquaintance. It was the perfect <laughs> little bit of provocation to lure a genuine and authentic exactly. and skilled palm reader into the den. So I am beyond delighted <laughs> that the outrageous clickbait taglines offended you so much. Yes. And that leads me quite nicely into something I wanted to ask you actually. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask, um, what are some of the common misconceptions around palmistry? Because I get the impression that there are more than a few. So maybe you might want to give one or two particularly choice examples <laughs> yeah, no i'm happy to like usually when we think of a palm reader it's it's yeah. not quite as bad as a taro reader where the you know the muggle public or you know the mundane kind of public uh thinks of the old woman in the in the romani tent and they're sitting there and they ominously pull over the cards and that's me <laughs> <laughs> you think of that but to even a more extreme when it comes to palm reading because then it's yes. like ooh look at this I see you have this line you're going to die in a car accident and then like your lifeline being broken or something exactly so people freak right. out or they're um or they'll go out and um because they cut their hand or they get a scar on something they're thinking oh my god now the rest of my life is horrible um and something major dramatic has happened and it's just like that could be true but it's never really that ominous um, coming from the theater. Mm. We don't need to go out and be theatrical with it. It's more mm. of when it comes to the length of your lifeline, there are varying lengths that's not going. And there are so many different ways to tell timing that it's mm. not, you're not going to die if you have a lifeline this long. <laughs> Just like yeah. you have lines missing from, um 
from a hand that like you have your heart line missing or your headline missing that then there's specific things about your personality that that would mean not necessarily that you don't have a brain or you don't have a heart pumping in your chest because we know those are neither of those are true so <laughs> it's just sure. about breaking those myths and getting you a really nice common ground and stuff. okay so what I'm hearing there is, I suppose there's a danger in perhaps reading uh, an understanding of what's going on too literally and in too concrete a way. And, I, I, and the immediate example that springs to mind that would be equivalent in tarot is, of course, when the death card appears. Mm -hmm. And people, it can, whilst it can mean, mean an actual death, it's obviously symbolic more often of that sort of life, death, rebirth shift that's occurring within a queerance life. I'm wondering then, I've got another question um, mm -hmm. following on from that. You know, within tarot, I would often say if you have a little roadmap laid out in the cards that you really don't like the look of, in the same way, if you have a, like a little roadmap laid out on your palm that you really don't like the look of, what room is there for changing what is already shown, so to speak, as your fortune yeah. in your palms? That, that's a wonderful way to w look at it because I was going to mention maps. Um, I, yeah. I think of palm readers more like cartographers because um, there is a, a lot of the times when it comes to readings, people will notice, hey, I have a line over here on this hand, but I don't over here. What does that mean? And it takes it more. Um, when you're learning palmistry, you look at your dominant hand in the morning and your non-dominant at night because it's like a GPS versus a world map. As things change right. in the landscape and we have construction or flooding and things like that that change the GPS location, then by the end of the day, they will have changed your main life path. So if you see something pop up on your non-dominant hand that you don't particularly like or that you do like and you want to make more of, Right. Then you can track it every day on your dominant hand to make it stronger or make it go away. It's just a matter of learning yeah. where to look and what signs to search for. But it is a lot like looking at a map. Only in this case, this is a map mm. that you can see across the room and decide, do I want to get into that cashier's line or that cashier's line? That's amazing. So you're saying, if I'm understanding you correctly, and please amend <laughs> what I have to sort of reflect back that actually uh, the kind of minutiae of what's going on day to day is kind of flagged up really clearly on one hand and when it's an entrenched kind of direction that you're taking it will then start to show up on the kind of bigger world map of the other hand mm -hmm. and the way that it goes um sometimes you'll notice for example if you are particularly angry or uh -huh. you have a lot of bad things going through your life right now, like with all the retrogrades happening, um, you right. might notice that your dominant hand is sufficiently more red than the other hand. That makes sense. Right. You're a lot angrier. Yes. Your blood circulation is pumping. So you're a lot more angry now than you will be over the course of your entire life. So. Wow. It, it's I love it. So it's a very mutable and sensitive art form then perhaps more so than i had realized prior to actually engaging in conversation with you yeah and it, it's not in the sense because taro can give very accurate answers like that it can really mm. kick it down to the minute details but the way that i like to look at it is if i really want to get to know somebody and they have a ridiculously specific question Sometimes instead of pulling out the cards, which can be a lot more general, it can be a lot more sweeping, um, I'll mm -hmm. say, show me your hand because I'll be able to tell exactly what you're stressed about. I'll be able to tell exactly if that guy or woman is your soulmate or not because there is a line for that. Mm -hmm. I can tell the number of children that you'll have because you have more accuracy on your hands than sometimes yes. you in a card. It's not so sweeping for everybody. Your hands change every day. They're more accustomed to you. That's very interesting that you feel that you can get a greater degree of precision in general, as a general rule, when you're looking at someone's hands. And I understand, because we've had a little chat before, that in actual fact, your kind of interest in divination is pretty broad. You've actually kind of delved into all kinds of avenues, haven't you, as regards divination? Would you like to share a little bit of the breadth of what you kind of have covered and can share with others? 
Yeah, the reason why I have such a broad interest in all kinds of different divination is because there's just like life, just like theater, there's so many different components to what is going on. Sometimes we want just the general sweeping look and we might pull out a tarot card. Or if we want to know exactly how our emotions are in it at the time, we might want to pull out an oracle card. If we want the specific um, actions of what's going to happen, I might look at a palm or I'll look at Lenormand or tea leaves because tea leaves are pretty, they're fine line between Lenormand and tea leaves. Um, or just, it really depends on what's going on in your life and what's going to attract to you. And the thing that I love about being in so many different types of divination is it's more of when you come into if we just pick taro you are bringing in all of your life experience it, you could be a doctor and you could be seeing more of the literal meaning of all the different symbols and how someone's skin color looks and um their body position and things like that from a medical point of view mm. whereas if you're coming from a more artistic side, you might notice the way that the lines are sweeping across the cardstock. You might notice the color mm. palette. Um, so you're bringing your life experience and the things that you know and the knowledge you already have of different mythologies and real life examples into the cards. It's very similar with divination. If you want to get to know mm. one method a lot better, try out a different one. Because for example, if someone is really big into astrology, I definitely recommend palmistry because all your fingers and mounts are named after astrological points. Mm. So it helps you get to notice. Um, you learn more about different things the more you dabble into other ones. And it just helps you become a master of all instead of just a master of one. Yeah. So your astrology knowledge, for example, can enhance your work with tarot. It can help you relate to mm -hmm. the learning that you're undertaking with palmistry. And things become mutually reinforcing, things become kind of layered nuances across different mm -hmm. methods. And I suppose the commonalities and the patterns and kind of sinking in and reading into the kind of energies that you're tapping into, you start to see how everything is interrelated, I would imagine. Exactly. Because when you get that kind of energy of being able to see how everything is related, it's mm. like... It's like going to a show, going to an improv show where people make things up on the spot and someone gives a suggestion and the actor doesn't know what's going on. So they just make it up. It's not going to be as fulfilling as someone who is studied in a bunch of different things, read the newspaper and is up to date on current events, watches the news, goes to different communities throughout, uh, throughout the area and helps out with different things. So they're more knowledge spread. You're going to get a better performance. And it's the same mm. way with someone who's a reader. If you know somebody that looks at a lot of different decks, so like, for example, I did a, um, I did a series in my own group where we went through the fool's journey, but we compared the, the major arcana across four completely different decks. We did the Gothic mm. Horror, the Dreams of Gaia, Witches Taro, and the Enchanted World. All have completely different styles, and mm. Dreams of Gaia is on its own system. It doesn't even name right. it the same way. But you can learn to read all of them intuitively if you just look at the similarities and you mm -hmm. practice across all of them. And, and yes. when you spread yourself out like that, you're going to give more accurate readings, more precise readings for your clients, and it's going to give you better guidance for your own self, you know? Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I think that that practice of comparing different decks is a wonderful way to start building your kind of reading skills to the next level. If you've just started out, you've just learned the basic meanings, but you want to extend your personal vocabulary for each card that really helps you one of the ways that really helps you lean into that. Um, so we're going to get started on a little bit of a, a mini reading based around my hands a couple of weeks ago so really from what you've said that's a bit of a snapshot in time as well as a, a more general overview and I have no idea what Rachel's going to pick out what she ha is about to reveal so I don't really care I think that's a bit of fun I'm, I'm quite happy to go with it although I know but although I had my palm read a couple of decades ago in a bar in Birmingham in the UK and um some of what the guy said who read, it was very frank. 
<laughs> yeah, it so I'm prepared, I'm prepared for that. But uh, before we begin, I'd just like to invite you to share with me a couple of things that you're going to be doing here yeah. and elsewhere. So I have invited Rachel to come and do a palmistry Q&A. Um, we haven't decided how many months we're going to do that for, but you're going to um, allow others to participate in a little bit of a mini read, aren't you, by sharing their palms with you? via q and A, Q&A. is that right? Yeah, I'm happy to show up and answer questions. And um, the big thing is I really wanna teach everyone how to create a really magical, really positive and fulfilling life for themselves using their palms. So yes. I'm more than happy to show up and answer any questions if there's a line that worries you or if you have discoloration or even a tattoo that covers a certain area and what that would mean. Um, then yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions about it. I'm happy to do this as long as people have interest. That is fantastic. And also you've told me that you're actually doing some workshops uh, this autumn, which uh, you're very kindly kind of throwing open the doors and inviting members of Tangled Root Den who may be interested to have a look at that. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to be, um, doing some really in-depth talks about palmistry. I have a really big event coming up in my group, Crohn's Magic Corner, um, with a bunch of different divination masters, and I'm going to really get in-depth with palmistry. And from October up until December, I'm really going to go in-depth about it. I have weekly live streams that I will be talking about different parts of palmistry in, and it's all going to be leading up to a brand new and intuitive palmistry course that I'll be letting out on New Year's Day. So um, fantastic! it's going to be palmistry central <laughs> over on my... This end. is really exciting. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be wetting your appetite a little here today. Rachel will be back doing some more Q&As each time that Rachel shows up. We're going to um, share the links, drop the links to her group, drop the links to any other material she thinks you might want to take a look at and check out. So shall we go into um, having a little look at a few things you want to pick out from the palms I sent to you, just as a little demonstration and a bit of entertainment? Yeah, sure. Let's switch it. Okay, so what everybody should be seeing is... Um, is her hands on the side. So as I swipe through these, you'll see the pictures change as I want to zoom in. I will pronunciate different lines. So, and I might use multiple colors. I might have a red or I might want to highlight some things with green, things like that. So, so you know exactly what in the world I am talking about and you can stare at your own hand and see if it's happening on yours too. <laughs> okay. So first off, when it comes to palmistry and it comes to your practice in general, we want to look at what would be best for you because not all readers are the same, not all people are the same. So we want to be able to look at what is going on with you. Um, so you are right-handed, correct? No, I'm left-handed. Left-handed. So let's look at your other hand. Woo, left-handed. So because this is your dominant hand, what we're going to look at first is your personality and the basics parts of your personality lie in whoop, pen. We lie in your heart line, your head line mm -hmm. and your lifeline. Very simple. Okay. Everybody knows these. Now those articles that you'll read sometimes are accurate about these, but sometimes they aren't. So we're going to give you a nice basic understanding. So the heart line, let me redraw it. So it's nice and accurate. That tells you how you are in your relationships and how you interact with not just love and your partner, but also friendships and family. So for this, the main goal, what we want to see is getting the head, getting this line in between your pointer finger and your middle finger. And the reason being, if it's too far over under the pointer finger, you're too giving in your relationships. You nurture other people before you nurture yourself. And you can easily be taken advantage of, kind of like a reversed queen of cups. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's completely underneath the middle finger, 
you're more of a king of swords. <laughs> you put yourself above ah. everybody else. Um, you make sure that uh, that you are nurtured first before other people, but sometimes it can come off really selfish and really blocked. So we yes. want to make sure there's a nice balance. We can come see- off a little cold. Exactly. <laughs> and we can see here that Francis is really balanced in the middle. <laughs> so you're good. You don't give too much in a relationship to your family, to your kids, to your partner, and yeah. you don't take too much. You um you have found that point in your life where you're like, I know what I am worth, but at the same time, I will put somebody else first because I want to, not necessarily because I have to. So Yes. You're good on this. <laughs> and well, then- <laughs> that is a delightful surprise because I did wonder, you know, I mm-hmm. can be, if anything, a little swordsish at times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good to see. It actually, looking at this hand, my um, dominant hand in person, it appears to be kind of branching off and forking slightly at that end where we're going towards the fingers. Is there any significance yeah. to that when yeah. you're line does that yeah i was actually about to mention that because we have your headline here and we have a tiny little fork right there so yes and in fact there's another one um just right under the swordsy finger as well which Mm -hmm. perhaps is less apparent on the photograph yeah it's kind of like right there yeah it's a little bit there so the way that um what that would mean is sometimes, like you said, sometimes you have a tendency to be a little swordsish, and sometimes you have a tendency to be a little bit cups. So mm. for what you can do in all your lines on your hands, which you can think of it in this kind of way, is because you're a cartographer, you're looking at a landscape, and you're looking at a series of rivers, hills, valleys, and mountains. When you want to direct the water from on your lines, the rivers that are flowing on your lines, the energy currents, towards something, you will continue doing actions to bring it that way. So if you want to stay towards this, you would continue acting that way and you'd see your heart line start to move up towards your middle Mm -hmm. finger. Whereas if you still want to be very, very giving and make sure everyone else is taken care of, you'll see it start slowly branching over towards your pointer finger. Mm. So because you have the branches it just shows that sometimes you tend to meander and these could be a period of time like a couple weeks or a couple months where you were acting in more of those two ways but Mm. your dominant nature lies in having that balance so yeah if you want to keep it in the middle it's just a matter of um because i'll talk about this in a little bit on learning to and that you need to know how to invest in yourself setting out time to take care of yourself at least once a week and then setting out time to take care of other people as well and it'll keep that river nice and flowing in the right direction great thank you for sharing that yeah no problem and then if we zoom out yeah we will see your headline so your headline talks about um your thought processes now Mm -hmm. It's funny because the longer the headline, usually the longer it takes for anybody to do any action. So if you have a headline like that, it yeah. doesn't take forever to do anything because um, you're just thinking, <laughs> thinking, thinking. You're very imaginative. You're up in the clouds kind of thing. Yeah. And, and last time we chatted, um, I talked to you about the fact that my toddler, I keep thinking, why in the world does she take forever cleaning up her toys? Why doesn't she answer me? It's because she has a headline that wraps almost all the way around her hand. Like, oh my goodness. Can you take <laughs> forever? That's why. Um, but in this case, we can see that you are really, it's not too short and it's not too long. So you have mastered how you want to process information. Like if, especially if anything bad comes up, like an unexpected bill or an accident or something, you don't take too long to act. You don't, Mm. you're not super methodical about it. You're just really nice and balanced. So do you feel like, um, you don't wait too long for things to happen or that you're, yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm quite decisive Mm -hmm. and it, it, I don't find it a struggle to to come to a decision very often 
Yeah, yeah. I, and I would agree with that. I actually, another question here. Do you feel like that you have a natural talent for writing? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, possibly. I feel I, uh, people do say that, you know, I've read my, my writing or say that I'm relatively articulate. So yes, yeah, certainly I have an interest in words. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I ask is because um, those that are particularly good thinkers and good communicators um, have a writer's fork, which is what you got here, what I just drew. Um, it's when oh, the okay. end of your headline branches off. And when you have yeah. that, you're in good position to write a book and make money off of it. So I would recommend writing a book. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> you are a natural writer. Um, and the more you practice your writing, the more classes you take, the more, for example, if you do the morning pages or anything like that, um, yeah. the better, the more water will flow into that fork and the more successful you will be as a writer. So. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> It's something to definitely uh, take a look at. So mm. it's something else that comes to your general personality and getting really clear on who you are would be looking mm. at your lifeline. So your lifeline, the reason that's important is it'll tell you how your health is. Um, I know a lot of readers that because we are that wounded healer um, kind of vibe where we want to take care of other people. We don't know how to do the work on ourselves or they're really obsessed with shadow work and beating up on themselves and digging down into their, their bad qualities. Um, <laughs> then their lifeline would have chains in it. But right. you, don't, you don't have any chains in it, but literally it would look like chains, sometimes really small. Um, oh, you know, wow. And these people would, um, especially if it's up more towards the top, so up here, yeah. they would have had a hard family life growing up, not a lot of support. Um, and in turn, their health might be a little bad. So you would see, mm. um, sometimes you would see dashes. It would be a dashed lifeline. Or it would be someone with a very short lifeline because it shows that your health is not the best. But the more that you yeah. take care of yourself and nurture yourself, like yours, yours is great because you have that balance, remember, in relationships, then mm. you're good you i don't see you know cancer or any bad diseases or anything like that happening um because you actually do take care of yourself so yeah the only thing i would see do you have flakiness on your palm you got some flakiness um, right there there's a tight you know i can see where you're pointing out and there is a tiny dry spot just a little bit further down from that on my hand at the moment actually so i think that possibly was a little bit of dry skin that on my palm at that point in time yeah yeah so if you had any health issues i would say but from childhood to mid-20s maybe mm. 30s that would have caused these little things they're called stress lines yes you see stretch skin like that they they're not going to be as pronounced as i'm drawing them they're going to look like little thin spidery lines yes i can see them yeah, yeah. that's where you have current stress in your life so it the reason mm. i say between childhood and like 25 30 years old you probably had a lot of stress from your love life and should i be with this partner should i not be with this partner bad rough breakups um and expressing any kind of love in your life that will cause some stress, probably cause some headaches. You weren't eating right or sleeping very well, which caused the dry patchiness. And because it's not that big of a patch anymore, you've healed from it, but it's still kind of lingering. Mm. So do you feel like you now, still have some stuff lingering like that? Um, well, it's interesting because uh, I, I suffered from depression in, mm -hmm. from about... 19 and through through my 20s and i would say that that really resolved itself probably towards the end of my 20s 28 29 30 okay that makes um sense. the other thing that i'm curious about is that i did have a cancer diagnosis three years ago so is there anything that would indicate that looking at my palm presently it's good to see that you feel it's in quite a healthy condition right now. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, right now it looks good. The only thing that would stand out to me if I were to look in a lot of detail is 
the lighting is a little bit different on there than it of is. Of course. But yeah. you've got a little bit of discoloration, a little black bluish kind of discoloration around yes. your lifeline. Yeah. So that would make sense for cancer. Now, right. I don't see that it is that bad. Like it hasn't grown that much because your entire line is not a giant bruise. Nope. It isn't. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're doing very well. I would say that you would kick its butt very easily because of how your health is already and you take care of yourself. So. I yeah. Thank I, you. I wouldn't see that you would have it for very much longer. But no. For you, I would really watch that discoloration. If you start to see um, that darkness start spreading, really watch yourself going to the doctor, talking to them about your symptoms, things like that. Have them run a few mm. more tests to see if it's spread anywhere else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. But it looks very contained right now. Just it, is it a small area that you said that you had, if you don't mind me asking? I had breast cancer. I had a mastectomy. So the area that contained the cancer, of course, was removed. Mm -hmm. um, and I had chemotherapy and radiotherapy as well. So there's a possibility that there could be residual cancer cells within the body. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, I've got the all clear at the present time and we hope it stays that way. So Yeah, I don't, I don't see it spreading at all. So I hope no. it stays the same too. Well, like I said, because, well, let's, let's not hope. Let's look. Let's look at your other hand. Okay, so just looking at a general overview, the middle of your hand here. Yeah. The dominant hand is significantly lighter than on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, right there. That's so true. that would be the period of time in which you were battling your cancer. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not spread down here. Yeah. Yeah. It's n it's got this bluish, I don't kind of um a mix with navy and a little bit of green for the upper part where the cancer was, but not so much on the bottom of your hand. So yeah. you should be just fine. It's not okay. spreading. I yeah. I do see it impacted money for sure though, which is understandable because it's fighting cancer. It's gonna right all in there of course because in there um m one of my favorite lines to look for are money triangles if you see triangles yeah. show up from your headline to your lifeline and then little lines in between that's your potential yes. for money whereas here yeah. it's completely open and we have that discoloration happening so yeah there was a distinct lack of money coming in not as quickly for as sure. it was flowing out Absolutely, because I couldn't work uh, whilst I was in treatment and um, in, I was eligible for certain benefits during that time, but they were late. They were running behind on processing everything. So we had a great big blank where money should have been. <laughs> so that would be absolutely correct for that time period. Yeah. But it, I do see that it has... It has lightened up quite a bit because if I yeah, money has gotten a lot easier, and over the course of your life, if you want to work on building back those funds again, I see you've got some potential here. Uh huh. All, the goal mainly is just to get those closed up, so they yeah. would literally be triangles. So okay, and things like that, and then that would mean you are retaining money more than it is leaving. So yes, it definitely looks good and it's going to get a lot better. Mm. Yeah. I'm glad that you battled it though. And that you won because otherwise, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't have a wonderful little family going and then we wouldn't be able to chat and get to know each other. So I know. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the key lines then that you would look to probably first on any person's palm is that correct yep those are what i look at first um and then um 
the really popular lines are, is he my soulmate? Which I automatically oh, yeah. go to palmistry. I'm not even going to pull out my cards. Give me your hand because I can tell you straight up yes or no. And the reason yeah. being is sometimes you'll see this in the, um, in the articles going around. It's like, if you see this line, you're destined for true love, which is true. They aren't lying about that. Um, yeah. You'll see an X pop up underneath Ooh, and the fun thing is, um, yes. the ring finger is your Apollo. Does it matter which palm? I'm having a look right now. <laughs> if it's, remember, if it's your non-dominant hand, that's your entire life. And if it's your dominant yeah. hand, it's right now. Oh. Yeah. And the thing about this line is this can be a child. This can be a family member, a friend, a mentor, or a lover. Because soulmates yes. come in so many different forms. So if you have somebody asking you, or if you're asking yourself, are they my soulmate? Do you see the X there? If you do, and it's matching on their hand, because it will match on the other person's hand, then you're soulmates. If not, then there's the answer. That is amazing. I will test that this weekend with my yep. date. And, <laughs> and if there's no match... <laughs> Then nope. <laughs> then I guess this eclipse means <laughs> boom. <laughs> exactly. And, and the, the date is gone. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is, um, every time I run into these, like I have a good three or four on my hand. Mm -hmm. One belongs to my daughter. She's the littlest one. One belongs to my husband, but he's got two on his hand because he met his best friend when they were eight years old, and they have matching exes. And then he met me yeah. in eighth grade, and then we got matching exes as well. So it's funny to look at your family members, and you can, of course, say, I'm learning how to read poems, and they're not going to take you seriously, sadly, but they're not going to take you seriously, and they'll just give you their hand. Um, and yeah. you can look for the line and see, ooh, okay, this is, yeah. uh, this is right. And this is also good for people that want to have children uh -huh. because there are lines for children, which is another common thing that can be confused yes. for those that are teachers. Like you have, um, one of these would be your daughter at least. Yeah. Like, Cause you have so many yes. people close to you that you are, very mentorish too and these are your teacher marks um it can get a little confusing but i wouldn't be oh, surprised okay. if that soulmate mark would be matching on your daughter's hand yes that wouldn't surprise me at all yeah <laughs> but i would think that the littlest one here boop, that one right there mm. is your daughter Oh, how, how sweet. And you say the others can also be teacher marks at the same time. That's curious. Yeah. Because, uh, um, and the more students you have, and mm -hmm. the more you like to teach others, the more you will get. <laughs> and yeah, it makes it a little difficult for the teachers who do want to have children. Because then they're like, do you see any kids for me? It's like, I see you have a lot. But a like classroom full. <laughs> exactly. I see you have a Yeah, that's really interesting. I see I see a lot of those um fine vertical lines right from the base of the finger at the left and right the way around almost to the side of the palm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And that just shows that you're a little bit of a teacher, but at the same time you do have potential for more children if you want them. The choice is always switch, the switch swoo. That's <laughs> exciting. Yes. And if you don't want them, if you don't want any of the lines to be as they are, they will fade and get faint. They might not disappear mm. completely, but they will get very thin and spidery like the stress lines. Um, and they'll mm. just sit there because it's a part of your personality's history. So yeah. yeah. But that's a popular one. Whenever I get yes. the soulmate question is I go look for that X because that'll tell me exactly, especially if they're in the relationship or not, if they're actually yeah. meant to be together. Something I see a lot online that's commented on is the, the overall shape of the palm and the shape mm -hmm. of the fingers. Is that something that you place a great deal of importance on when you read? Yeah, and that's actually how I find out which cashier I need to look at at the grocery store. Um, the, right, tell me more. Uh, <laughs> yes, everybody can use this tip and you will get your groceries faster. Um, 
basically the bigger the palm so if we think of beast from beauty and the beast he has yes. earthy manly hands okay he's very detail oriented mm. he would be a wonderful a very slow but a very caring cashier okay mm-hmm. because he would make sure that the eggs are on top of the bread and that it does not crush it <laughs> you know he would be very good um but at the same time because he is so big and burly he is a lot more blunt his hands are probably very coarse you know just like we can see in the movie actually i was building my course the other day and i literally pulled up his hands it's like look at his hand he literally goes like this to where you can see it um you can see his personality just from the general shape and that's due to a really big palm and smaller stubblier fingers um Mm -hmm. But if we have the really big palm with longer fingers, like we have yours, then you are a water hand. So oh, this would okay. be Belle, um, how she is more creative and flowing and um, very nurturing and um, not as detail-oriented as an earth hand would be. She looks at the mm. picture, hence why she would pay attention to the big picture in the movie. Um, but at the same time, you're able to see the beauty in a lot of different things. So the arts are a really big thing for you. Um, very. Mother- That's amazing. Cause I would have imagined being as I'm an earth sign that, you know, mm-hmm. my hand would be full of earth energy, but I'm not so much a detail orientated person. I'm much more a big picture character. So actually what you're saying sounds more accurate to to who i am as a person but yeah it's funny that um water energy is there and Mm. and it's funny like um sometimes those that are more watery energy and have the longer fingers if they do get pregnant or they end up with some kind of illness to where their hands really swell up you'll notice they get very detail oriented because their palms have gotten bigger oh um that is and their fingers look smaller in proportion to the swelling so yeah they'll be more detail oriented until the swelling passes wow and i wonder if that applies to other parts of the body Mm -hmm. when you have uh, an illness that kind of distorts the shape of your body from its normal physiology whether that has that kind of impact that's really Mm -hmm. i'm curious yeah just like there's palmistry they have it for feet too and they have uh-huh. phrenology for, you know, we see the Muppet show where, you know, Fozzie is hitting Kermit on the head with the hammer to make his intelligence bump bigger. You know, <laughs> it's, it's phrenology. It's different portions of your head and how the texture is and things like that, according to Fortnite. Yeah. So, <laughs> and of course, if we have more of a slimmer kind of hand and it's not so square, it's more oblong shaped, uh-huh. that would be our fire hands with long, with so those kind of sort of long, narrow, and quite delicate looking hands would be fire hands. Is that correct? No, those like, if we look at in the movies, how they have very long, like witchy looking fingers, like Maleficent mm. fingers, they're air hands. Right. They're very thin fingers, very thin palm. If we really want to get super specific with it, and they're very dainty and their nails are more triangular shaped then they are of psychic hands. So really good psychics, if based off of their shape hands, well, the shapes of their hands, yes. have very long fingers to turn over the cards and to pick out the lines. You so know? they've kind of got the sort of pianist fingers then. So if, if you were to go to a psychic fair, for example, and you were wandering around and you could see people dealing cards and reading for other people, mm-hmm. would, would you favor somebody with long slender fingers <laughs> if you didn't? know anything about the other person who was reading i would actually favor either people with earth hands or the air hands and the reason why um the air hand people are going to be very direct they're going to be very much to the point they're going to communicate very clearly and they're going to get you done quickly so if they charge Uh you a minute they you will get a lot of information (laughs) in a minute um, I see you like the instant gratification, like yeah. quick at the quick at the grocery <laughs> checkout, quick to deal the information you need when you're sat down with a bit of divination. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but people with air hands, um, 
even though they get through their lines very quickly, if I have something that I want to be taken care of at a checkout, mm. I would go for somebody with an earth hand in the aisle instead, like a cake or something, mm. because they're going to make yeah. sure that it doesn't break and that it doesn't get all messed up. So if you mm. are a little more raw and you go to a psychic fair and you just want some nurturing done, look for people with the bigger hands. Because yeah, because they're going to take care of you mm -hmm. as well as read for you. Exactly. I like that. Yeah, and you can see this from a distance. If Also another thing, if you go to a job interview and you're wondering whether or not it's going to go well, notice how mm. the person gives you their hand. If it's open and big, you're going to have a really good conversation with them. They're going to be very mm. relaxed. Whereas if they're very stiff and the handshake is very firm and stiff, you're not going to have a very good time. They're not going to give you a lot of feedback. You're not going to read their face very well. They're going to be more cautious with you and it's just not going to be as fun. So more formal and more closed off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like you can tell if someone comes to your booth at a psychic reading fair and you shake their hand and they sit there and their hands are very tight, they're very nervous and they're very cautious and they don't want to give anything away. These are the people that mm. usually you're skeptics and they say, well, you tell me then if you're, if you're the reader, you tell me. Whereas right. people who are open and are going to be really relaxed in their wrists, um, the texture of their hands would be softer. They're, they have a lot more flexibility. You're going to have a really great time reading for them and you're not going to uh -huh. want them to get up. <laughs> yeah. So as a matter of interest then, being as I've got a, a water palm, mm -hmm. how would that tend to influence someone's reading style if they had the same palm as myself? Or how would you expect it to influence my style? Well, somebody with a water hand is going to, like I said, have more of a king of cups, queen of cups, signif signifier card. Um, they're going to be more nurturing. They're going to want to make sure that people are emotionally okay before they get up from the table. Um, and you're going to, from what I've noticed, pay more attention to color palette when it comes mm. to your cards than you will, you know, how clear or symbolic the messages are. You're going to pay attention to just how beautiful does it look and creating an experience for someone. Same thing with right. earth people, only they're going to be more of our king and queen of cups, a little bit of the not cups, uh, pentacles, um, a little bit of the knight of pentacles because they are very detail oriented. They're going to want to ground you first and give you the lay down of, okay, this is how it's going to go. Um, mm. These are the people that may not ask clarifying questions, but mm. they will, if they need it, they will ask you. Fire people. Um, there are wands. Um, they're going to be very energetic. These would be the people that would probably dress up and have right. on the whole get up and put on a show. So a bit of like sort of Leo drama and flair, that mm -hmm. kind of idea. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're going to put on a show for you and make sure that you're good. Um, they might do the <gasps> or mm -hmm and really play it up uh, because they have yes. really great poker faces and they get you sucked in. Whereas, so they kind of create a performance around it. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit more theatrical about it. Yeah. Um, because they have that energy. They're fire. They're in for it. They're a right. little bit the creative side with the water hands, but not so yeah. much. Um, they're more about let's get this done and let the, let's get this going, you know? Yeah. It's and interesting then, because there's a very sort of locally famous reader. He also reads palms actually on the Barbican, which is the historic area of Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen him, but a friend did. And um, she absolutely loved all the kind of really sort of hackneyed theatrics. <laughs> and he did it in a very sort of knowing, tongue in cheek and humorous way. Mm -hmm. And I must say, it, it, it sounded a world away from sort of my usual experience of reading cards, whether that's reading for others or receiving a reading. But there was also something, you could see the enchantment, but the enchantment was about just that the thrill of, of, of um, delivering a really delicious piece of theatre, you know? Yeah. And yeah. these are the, if you think of the fire people, we would think of for Harry Potter fans, the Weasley twins, how they're the tricksters. They uh -huh. try to make you laugh and try to make you comfortable. So that's where yeah. the theatrics comes in because they want to make yeah. sure that not only are you paying for guidance, but they're going to 
have you pay for an experience as well. So you walk away going, I never forgot him. I need to find him again because I just had a fun time, you know? And then, um, and sorry, I had a phone call come in and it muted you. I'm so, I apologize. You're ah. good. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So you were saying that, 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 you know, they don't just want to deliver the reading. They also want to make sure that you're kind of entertained. Mm -hmm. And they want to make sure that you leave the table laughing and you feel some kind of warmth in you, even though yeah. it might not be the best outcome. Instead of the yeah. couch, how they would be like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? And really nurture you before you leave. The mm. uh, wands will, uh, well, the fire hands will be more like, well, that sucks. But you know what? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't like, like you didn't deserve that anyway. You know what? You're going to go off and here's a card. You're going to meet this guy and it's going to be amazing. And he's not going to yeah. be bad in bed. And he's going to try and pump you up after the disappointment has happened you know i see i love that and and i like what you said about the earth hand people just really being very aware of the context uh, kind of filling you in on the context for the reading um kind of settling you into the reading space by explaining exactly what to expect and anticipate so taking care of you in that way i suppose introducing it's very earth-like isn't it introducing that element of predictability in order to help reduce any anxiety exactly yeah. these are the kind of people that would put crystals under your chair to real that mm -hmm. would be their idea of it or to give the ambiance of a really pretty, very soft table. They would take your hand very gently or like uh, clean it and put some lotion on your hands to give you that kind of experience. They're gonna be mm. more detailed in that kind of way. They're not going, yeah. to, a lot of earth people, um, may, they, some of them might wanna put on a show, but they're gonna do it with a lot of subtlety you know mm, um and yes. they want you to take them seriously so they will pay attention to the tiny details of things not so much the big big picture and mm. fireworks and big old cloak and things like that they might look like an everyday person but as you get up to their table you'll notice that it's very intentional in what they've put out mm. I love this because this then sort of suggests to me that actually if you are starting out in tarot, if you are learning um, who you are as a reader, what your strengths might be, um, how to kind of position yourself, what kind of presence you might be developing, that there's some really useful clues and cues within your hands mm -hmm. it's phenomenal yeah. actually there are and it, and it gives you when you know palms even just a teensy mm. bit it gives you preparation for dealing with certain kinds of people um mm. especially for those of us that are introverts and or are empathic like our water hands a lot of the times they're very empathic people um mm. it, it really helps give us a heads up so if we yeah. are going to a fair and we see that um, we're set up next to somebody who is very flamboyant and we're not, then that gives us preparation on, okay, how can I attract the right people to my booth and mm. make sure that I'm still getting a steady flow, whereas I'm not as theatrical as the other person. Or yeah. um, if you are more theatrical, figuring out, okay, so how can I use this to my advantage? I have a lot of energy. I can't just sit here and just give a reading back to back to back to back to back. I need to get up and move a little bit. How can I bring this into my practice? I'd really recommend you learning palms then. <laughs> because then you can get up and go through the crowd and be like, hey, $5 and I'll tell you if, you know, your relationship is going anywhere or something like that and do it on the go as you go around. <laughs> you know? I love it. Even the way you're talking about that brings in a certain sense of kind of showmanship. And um, I love the way that we started our conversation and you really brought your own lens in by really bringing it back to your theatre experience or your understanding from theatre and using that as a metaphor and transferring that across to what you do now. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. And, and, you know, my background prior to tarot reading, of course, was in social work. And so I suppose there's a lot of influence from 
um, my understanding of counseling skills, of kind of psychology, um, and probably factors that are kind of interrelated to those subjects still have a lot of influence in, in how I deal with people when I'm reading for them. So it is it's curious um, how diverse how diverse it actually is divination in general and how much that is down to what we bring from our life experience. It's not just about our psychic abilities mm. or whether we're an empath or whether we have, as you said, rightly say, whether we've spent a lot of time in study of a particular form of divination, but it's also the whole of who we are enters into the frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I find it interesting because in my own school, where I'm helping re readers kind of break into their intuition and break them out of their shell. Um, I mm. started putting up um, weekly reading practices to see how they would do. And I have, um, I've got virtual assistants in there. I've got teachers in there. I've got psychologists in there. And the approach in which they ask the client that I've, I'm picking characters from plays. So of course their life is going to be a little out there. Um, mm. But it's interesting to see their direction and how they talk to these people and talk to mm. this client and their approach to it, how they ask the questions and word it. Like there is a thing that makes you a very special reader and it makes you, and of course a lot of it lies in the spiritual side and what, if someone was you, what would they have to believe in? And if someone had to be you, what would be important to them as a reader and that kind of thing. But it also lies in who you are on, you know, lower three chakra sense on a really base level and how you survive mm. your day to day life. And that's how you get the people. That's how you not only get really good guidance for yourself, but that's also how you really um, create a solid ground. That's how you get certain clients coming back to you for more. That's how you give yourself really great guidance is figuring out what kind of reader am I and how can I phrase the questions correctly or how can I build the spreads mm. to make it work for me? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No more uh, Pinterest no. spread hunting. <laughs> make your own <laughs> spreads and make it work for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think there's nothing more powerful than creating um, your own spreads. Absolutely. Because you're really, like you're saying, focusing that intention then, aren't you? Yeah. And so that always makes it more powerful. Exactly. And it makes it fun in terms of palmistry because there's really only four things that you need to find out from a client in order to give them an amazing reading or even to give yourself an amazing reading. And it's that, what is the action? Why do I want to do it? What's the emotion behind it? And what's in my way? That's a simple four card spread. And you can easily see that on a hand. You can see mm. what they want to do based on where their career is going or the kind of relationship that they're in. You can see what's in their way from the stress lines. You can see why they want to do it based off of how they grew up on their hand and, you know, how to get it done. You, you can give precise action steps no matter what they do. Yeah. It. It's just a matter of... So that's great. So um, recap. So that is yeah. <laughs> what to do. What to why do. to do it, mm -hmm. the emotion behind it, mm -hmm. and then what's the final one? How to do it. How to do it. What to do it, why to do it, the emotion behind it, and how to do it. Well, that's fun. Yes. I think, you know, anybody watching this who has an oracle deck, has some cards, whatever form of divination they want to use, that's a great little simple. I'm, I'm really a fan of, you know, two card, three card, four card spreads, because you can get a lot of bang for your buck out of them, but they're also very memorable, aren't they? They are. And, and the funny thing is that exact technique, that's literally an acting technique. <laughs> that's literally take, looking at the spread. Yes. What is my character? What do they want? What is the obstacle or, or the antagonist in their way? And what is my motivation? We make fun of that uh -huh. all the time, but literally yeah. that's the part in a reading that the client never wants to tell you. <laughs> they don't want to tell you what their motivation is in the real I world. love that you're, you're borrowing from kind of sort of theory within acting. It's, you know, sometimes I will read sort of articles, 
you know, where people are kind of laying out their five point plan for world domination in the business sense. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you could draw a card for each of those. You know, mm -hmm. anytime I see something where somebody breaks it down into two or three clear points, I'm like, I can turn that into a spread. I'm a big fan of just being like a kind of a magpie and, and stealing things and then using them to kind of create tarot. Yeah, definitely try that as a spread. I know that I have. Yeah. And it, it really gets you right into the point and it helps yeah. you look at the hand a lot quicker. It helps you throw the bones a lot easier. Like it's so when you break it down like that, it doesn't make it that hard and it can fit it to whatever your practice is. Uh-huh. So just to kind of close out our conversation, I had asked in advance, could you find, you know, four or five points about mm -hmm. cultivating a magical life? I, I know there's many points you might <laughs> want to talk about, but I hope you've been able to narrow it down to just a few simple ones that, that you could share before we kind of close the conversation um, oh, today. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I found a few. So first off, we talked a little bit about get clear on what you want as a practitioner, or a reader, or a spiritualist. If you have no idea what your goal is, then how are you supposed to do your own fool's journey to get there, you know? Um, and that's going to tell you what your beliefs are. That's going to tell you where you need to start looking in order to accomplish your goal. Mm -hmm. Then you need to figure out... Um, how to commit to your practice. Do you need to create a taro journal, which I'm a big fan of journals. I love it. Write it down. Um, or a palmistry journal, especially for this, because your hands change every day, write it down. And that's going to give you a really wonderful basis for everything, you know, and you need, when you put down that time to commit to something, it's going to help you take it more seriously it's just not another thing that you're going to start and then put in the back of the clause and it's never going to get noticed again this is something mm. you're going to do to take care of yourself and then thirdly watch for your triggers no matter if you're an empath or a reader or whatever it is anytime you receive information because we're all a little bit psychic it's going to cause some kind of physical reaction in you it's, or do you feel your intuition speaking to you from your gut? Do your hands get tingly like they're going to fall asleep? Do you feel your, your baby spots start tingling and firing away whenever your guides try to talk to you? Whatever it is, when you notice that reaction, write it down <laughs> and remember it. <laughs> because uh -huh. when you want to get back into the zone, all you got to do is do that action and you're there, you know? Mm. And then... Lastly, it's, well, not lastly, but the fourth thing is learn to invest in yourself, whether that means you go out and you buy a course, or you pick one day a week to sit down and do a spread, or um, you watch your energy, you watch the stress lines on your hand, and you take, pick a day to do a ritual for yourself, whatever it is, invest in you, because if you aren't going to do what's best for you, no amount of decks or crystals or, or, um, or mentors or anything like that are going to help you if you don't care about yourself first. Uh. Then the last one is just start. Because <laughs> there's yep. so many readers that are like, I need to memorize the keywords on flashcards and I, I won't ever be good at reading unless I memorize it. And it's like, just start doing it. Go on Tumblr and put yourself on Anonymous and ask for readings. Get feedback. Mm. Start practicing. Do something. Go live in a group and start asking. Like, because if you don't start, then you're never going to succeed because nothing's going to happen. So. Right. So it's almost like immerse yourself. Mm -hmm. Get started. Just do it. Like literally how I yeah. got started was going on Tumblr and asking for readings. And, mm. um, and then after that, it was like, well, I need money. I got diapers to buy. So it looks like mm. I'm just going to start an Etsy shop. And then yeah. years later, I'm, I'm teaching it. So it's like, you need to just start, just do it. Cause that's the hardest part. Go out on stage. You'll remember your line. Just go. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are some great tips. 
So knowing what it is that you want, making a start, really committing to what it is that you're doing and being consciously aware of your physical responses, noticing those cues that you really are aligned and on point. You will feel that within yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's your inner GPS, isn't it? Lighting up, telling you. Yeah, it is. And you can even find it if you don't notice a physical trigger, like if your arm doesn't mm. twitch when you know you get an accurate, accurate <laughs> reading or something, then you'll feel it by your emotions. If you're happy, mm. it's a wonderful time to do a reading. If you're depressed, probably not right now. Get yourself to a <laughs> neutral standpoint or better and notice how that affects your readings and see mm -hmm. what happens. Well, thank you so much. You've been incredibly generous with your time and your knowledge and wisdom. And I think there's a lot of kind of content here that's hopefully interesting to people in the group. Um, really enjoyed our conversation. And I'm sure that the Den would love to have you back another time to talk perhaps a little more on another topic. So yeah. I'm hoping we can keep in touch and uh, continue this kind of dialogue a little further another time yeah absolutely yeah whenever you want me to come on and do a q a just let me know i'm more than happy to that's wonderful so i'm gonna say goodbye now i'm going to leave zoom and <laughs> um i can't believe that you're just taking care of it all for me and you're gonna deliver it to the den <laughs> Yes, I will. So everybody can enjoy this. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you and um, take care. Right. Yeah, I know it's not quite the weekend, but um, <laughs> as it's starting early for me, I want to wish you a great weekend. Yes, you have a wonderful weekend as well. And I shall get this all up on to the Zen for you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with us all. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Take care, everyone. Take care, Rachel. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.